What's up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you have a fantastic Thursday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing I wanna talk about today, in fact, one of the most requested stories this week is the story around Tommy Robinson. Now, Robinson, if you don't know, because of his beliefs, his former association with the English Defense League, he has long been a controversial figure in the UK. He's best known for his anti-Islam and Islamic immigration views. Robinson supporters in general like him for speaking out against political correctness and the growing influence of Muslim communities throughout the UK, while opponents call him a racist bigot who stokes fear and division by painting the Muslim community with a very wide brush. Although Tommy's argument there is he claims he's not a racist since he only talks about an ideology and not the people's race. So that's a simplified version of the who we're talking about here. Now for the what, why, how, and when, which started last Friday. And that's because last Friday, Robinson was filming outside a courthouse covering a huge child grooming sex trafficking trial involving Muslim men. The trial, which is just one of a series of shocking trials that has rocked the UK, involves 10 accused men and allegedly upwards of 100 young girls as the victims. As of right now, 18 have publicly come forward and some of these girls are as young as 11. And so Robinson was there to await the potential verdict and he was live streaming the whole thing. And the stream starts with him confronting some of the men that are on trial, but for the most part, it's just him standing around talking to other bystanders, talking about the case. But then things ramp up at 9.40 a.m. when Robinson, who is still live streaming, is surrounded by seven police officers who tell him he's being arrested. Are you right? Are you gonna arrest me? Michael, he's gonna explain what's gonna happen next, right? Am I being okay. arrested? I am being arrested. What does that mean? What does that mean? And from that interaction, there was a lot of confusion of why was he being arrested? Right before the police showed up, he's kind of just standing around, talking to bystanders. Well, reportedly, Robinson was arrested for just talking about the ongoing child grooming case and made comments that the judge believed risked causing the child grooming trial to collapse. And the reason for that is this case has something called a postponement order. It's essentially a gag order. And the justification for this restriction on speech in the UK is that it's seen as necessary so the defendants can get a fair trial. As the secret barrister, a prominent legal blog explains. To avoid jurors having their deliberations contaminated by what they might read or hear about the earlier linked trials, reporting of all of them is often postponed until the end. This is what we had here. The judge had imposed a postponement order preventing the media from reporting on the ongoing trial until all linked trials had concluded. Breaching a reporting restriction amounts to a contempt of court. And what ended up being kind of crazy in my opinion is that until Tuesday, it was hard for outlets to talk about this because there was then a postponement order uncovering Robinson's case. This because the judge believed it would indirectly influence the child grooming case, but that was lifted after English news groups challenged that in court. And the official reason that order was then lifted was because it was pointed out to the judge that the gag order to be quiet about Robinson's case was already being widely ignored online. Now, as far as what happened to Robinson, within five hours of his arrest, he pled guilty and was sentenced to 13 months. And of course, following this, you had people furious at Robinson's arrest, this sentence saying he was just live streaming the event. Although you also have people arguing against that because at the beginning of the live stream, he is confrontational with several of the accused. You had Robinson asking them what they feel about their verdict, something that had not come out yet. At one point, he points out the men's bag and calls it his prison bag. This implying that Tommy thinks that they're guilty. And the reason people have been pointing out those moments is this is pretty much what he did back in 2017 where it got him in trouble and the judge then was very clear that if he did it again, he'd be back in prison. And connected to that, because it is a major point, one of the reasons leading to his arrest and quick sentencing is that he was out on a suspended sentence for what he did in 2017. Now that said, there have also been criticisms of the gag order itself and Tommy's arrest based on it. While some think that it is needed for a fair trial, many in the UK believe the whole concept of a postponement order is anti-free speech. People also pointing out that Tommy was allegedly just reading out things that a local newspaper had printed, this leading to claims that he was targeted specifically, that it was already publicly available information. There are also people that believe that this is a death sentence because given Tommy's anti-Islamic views, he'd be a target for Muslim inmates. But according to Tommy's lawyer, the judge basically said he doesn't care. And Tommy has claimed that prison administrators have purposefully put him in situations that would endanger his life. In the UK, they can apparently hold you for eight days without a trial. During one incident during his eight days, he was transferred to a prison for no reason, saying he asked for solitary for his protection but was denied. Robinson also claimed that a white prisoner saved his life when he came to Tommy and said that Muslim inmates in the prison were getting ready to put boiling water and sugar on him, and so he started a fight to get thrown in solitary. We've also seen over 552,000 people sign a change.org petition demanding that Robinson be freed. We've seen hundreds of supporters protesting his arrest at Whitehall and 10 Downing Street. We've also seen UK Independence Party leader and European MP Gerard Batten criticizing the gag order, calling it an attack on free speech, saying, what kind of police state have we become? I am trying to recall a legal case where someone was convicted of a crime which cannot be reported on, where he can be cast into prison without it being possible to report his name, offense, or place of imprisonment for fear of contempt of court. And I will say ultimately where I land on this, as far as Tommy Robinson as a person, I'm not saying I like what he says. I'm not ever wanting to be paired with him. But what I will say is a postponement order, a gag order on what should be a free press is disgusting and outright ridiculous. It is without a doubt suppression of free speech. It creates an environment that is prime for abuse and it's essentially criminalizing news. Outlawing facts and sometimes opinions is not the answer. But of course that is my opinion. And so I pass the question off to you. 
what is your takeaway from this situation? Because there's kind of two situations. One, there's the current legal situation of there is a law, however ridiculous I personally find it. Should he have taken that into account and not live streamed or no, you, you are happy that he did? And on the other end, what do you think about postponement orders? Are you for them or against them? Why, why not? I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below. But from that, I wanna share some stuff I love today and today in awesome brought to you by betterhelp.com slash DeFranco. BetterHelp, if you do not know, is a fantastic place where you can get affordable private online counseling. You get access to licensed trained, experienced, accredited psychologists, marriage and family therapists, clinical social workers, and board licensed professional counselors. All you've got to do is go to betterhelp.com slash DeFranco. You fill out a questionnaire, they match you with a counselor, and boom, you can start counseling today. And they really lean into the affordable aspect. After three months, the service becomes cheaper for you. If money is an issue in general, you can see if you're eligible for a financial aid discount. And I personally love this service for so many reasons. Before we did our first sponsorship, I was already signed up for it. And it makes available a very important thing that I think more people need to embrace. But main point, if that sounds interesting to you, you want to try it out like many from the nation already have, go to betterhelp.com slash DeFranco. But also a big note that I always like to hit on, if you are in crisis or you know someone is in danger, don't use that site. Instead, I'll link to resources down below where you can get immediate help. It is always important to be aware of the differences there. And the first bit of awesome today is the fantastic shitty robot creator that is Simone Geertz. Also, Simone, if I mispronounced your last name, I apologize. I found this explainer you put out on how to properly pronounce your name, but I did not have the uh, the, the appropriate equipment to, uh, to replicate it, or rather a, a way to replicate it without uh, it resulting in a career ending lawsuit. But main point, for those that aren't aware, uh, Simone, fantastic creator, highly recommend you check out our channel, subscribe. And two, yesterday she went into surgery to have a brain tumor removed. According to a tweet on her account, the doctors were very pleased. She woke up long enough to make an inappropriate joke. Things are looking good. And so Simone, I just want to send some love and positivity your way, uh, either with my words or my people. Love your face and uh, fuck Brian. Then we got a video from the fantastic Molly Burke, who I will say as a side note, I feel like a complete dick. We've talked multiple times about getting together for a video and because I am schedule ignorant, uh, I have not done that. So promoting her awesome collabs is how I will make do for now. Then we had Tom Cruise giving us a teaser pick for Top Gun 2 and oh, please don't suck. We had Life Knocking asking who owns your DNA. Zach Woods gave us tips for surviving in the woods. We got a featurette for Action Point. We had Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard replying to comments. And if you want to see the full versions of everything, I just shared the secret link of the day, anything at all. Links as always are in the description down below. Then in what is the mainstream media blaming YouTubers for today news, we have BBC News telling us YouTube stars might encourage kids to eat more cows calories, where they specifically named the massive creators Alfie Days and Zoella. They're making the kids fat and they've been doing it right under our noses this entire time. Reportedly, there was a new study that was presented by the European Congress on Obesity, and they said the study found that when kids watch popular vloggers consume sugary and fatty snacks, that those kids would then consume 26% more calories. And reportedly, how they got these numbers, they came to this conclusion. They took 176 kids, they split them into three groups. One group was shown a personality promoting an unhealthy food, another healthy food, and the last one a non-food product. And afterwards, the kids were offered a variety of unhealthy and healthy foods. Right in the range here was carrot stick to chocolate. And reportedly, the children who had seen unhealthy images consumed an average of 448 calories, while the others ate just 357. And according to Dr. Emma Boylan, the children consider the vloggers to be everyday people, just like their peers, adding they've earned a position of trust among young people, and there has to be some responsibility along the line. But if I could interject really fast, this is not news. All that appears to actually have been done with this study is to once again prove that advertising works. If you see a thing online, on TV, on a billboard, and it is presented in a way that is appealing to you, you are more likely to incorporate that into your life, maybe make a purchase. You've also kind of explained the, the parent, child, or brother, sister sort of relationship, where if you, you see someone that you, you feel connected to doing something, you incorporate that. Once again, that's not even new information. Even Anna Coates, the lead researcher of the study, said, we know that if you show children a traditional drink advert, then their preference for that drink rises. And adding, now that we've shown that children are influenced by online stars, our next study will look at whether they understand that in many cases, celebrities are being paid to promote products. And what I would say about that last part is I think that is the most important thing in general. I do think there needs to be rules, regulations, enforcement to make it so that all of these online stars are transparent when they're doing ads. On top of it being in general, just kind of a scummy thing to try and sneak something like that in, it's just plain manipulative. My main point, when you see that relative going, see, I told you YouTube was a bad influence on the kids, uh, maybe give them this uh, extra information and maybe they're not allergic to new information or having a different opinion and they'll, 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 they'll widen their worldview and actually understand the reality of the situation. Or that's just wishful thinking and, and it's too late for a lot of people. And then let's talk about the massive update around the Parkland shooting. That shooting, of course, at Stoneman Douglas High School where 17 were killed, 17 were injured. And so right now the shooter is facing 17 counts of first degree murder and 17 counts of attempted first degree murder. Now Broward County prosecutors said they plan to seek the death penalty. This will require them to prove the crime was premeditated. But on the other end, the shooter's attorneys have said that he will plead guilty in exchange for a life sentence instead of facing 
facing the possibility of the death penalty. His lawyers insisting he had a troubled life, that he should be spared execution, also arguing that it'd be wrong for the state to execute the shooter after so many red flags were missed that could have prevented the shooting. And finally, they argued that this deal would spare the victim's families from having to relive the tragedy through what would certainly be a lengthy trial and appeals process. But that said, the prosecution feels very confident because they have three videos from the shooter's cell phone that prove that the crime was premeditated. And those clips are part of an inventory of prosecution evidence recently shared with the defense team during pre-trial discovery. And the reason that for the past 24 hours you've seen that video posted on pretty much every news outlet, which I will touch on again at the very end of this story, is that because under Florida law, with few exceptions, evidence becomes a public record when it's turned over to the defendant's attorney as part of the pre-trial discovery process. And these videos are disgusting, they are horrible, but also they are fantastic evidence for the prosecution. In the first video, he says his name, he says that he's going to be the next school shooter of 2018. He says his goal is to kill at least 20 people with an AR-15. He gives the location of Stoneman Douglas, and he says that it will be a big event, that you will see him on the news, you'll know who I am. He then laughs, says you're all gonna die, makes gun sounds, says he can't wait. In the second video, he details his exact plan of how he's going to get there and what he's going to do. In the third video, he appears to give motive, saying I hate everyone and everything. With the power of my AR, you will all know who I am. I had enough of being told what to do and when to do. Later adding, you will all see, you will all know who my name is. And overall, what we see from these disgusting and disturbing videos is a twisted monster who premeditated his attack talking about it and then being excited about being made famous. Which is why I wanna to say to any of the mainstream media, news outlets, indie outlets, any any kind of news blogging organization that, that promoted this video, just plastered this asshole's face and name all over the place. And in a video where he is so excited knowing that the media is going to eat this up and showcase his face and he's going to be made famous. Go fuck yourself right in your stupid fucking face. At this point, I cannot believe that there is anyone out there in the news world that is ignorant to the fact that when you plaster the, these faces and names all over the place, you make these people famous, you also incentivize copycats. You're incentivizing the next mass shooter and you have a track record of just feeding these people. The extra clicks and ad dollars from people's morbid curiosity shouldn't be the driving force behind your news organization. You should always try to think how things are going to affect people. People should matter. Common decency, common sense should matter. Hell, look at this year's NBA Finals. If someone just, you know, storms the court, right? Like we've seen YouTube pranksters try and do in the past. Guess what? They don't fucking air that on television if they can help it because they don't want to promote that behavior. Yet, apparently for organizations like the Washington Post and NBC, nah, it's just another murderer. Sure, we're giving him exactly what he talked about in several videos and laughed about, but you know, Whatever. And to the people that message me and say, well, Phil, how are we supposed to talk about this story if we're not using faces and names? What do you think I just fucking did? It's not hard. All it takes is caring about decency more than dollars. I'm not saying suppress speech or suppress information. Let's find out everything we can, but don't make them famous. And of course, there can be moments where you have a different policy. If there's an active search for someone, yes, get their name, get their face out there so that they get apprehended. But once they're they're taken in, no. There's no benefit except to you for trying to get more clicks. You wanna show the names on your TV show, your website, your wherever? How about one of the 17 people he killed? Well, I appreciate places like CBS who have said they just will outright not show the video. That's a fantastic start, but if you still go to CBS News, his, his name and face are still plastered all over the place. And it feels a little bit sad to me that I need to even praise the, the smallest of steps, but but hopefully this, this slow kind of tippy toe can turn into a full on sprint to not being complete shitbags. But that's where this non-advertiser friendly rant is going to end. And of course, it's the story, then my opinion, and obviously this is a very strong opinion. I'd still love to hear from you whether you agree or you disagree in those comments below. And that's where I'm going to end today's show, although if you are not done consuming news, some of the other things happening around the world today that I'll link to in the description down below. We had Denmark passing what is being called the burqa ban. It's a law that prohibits face covering in public unless there is a quote, recognizable purpose. And with this move, Denmark is now in line with other European countries, including Austria, Belgium, and France. Also in New Jersey, we had a couple admit they stole $1.4 million from victims of Hurricane Sandy. This through a construction fraud scheme and they reportedly spent the money on gambling and jewelry. We also had Kim Kardashian West meeting with Donald Trump. This to discuss the possibility of a pardon for Alice Marie Johnson. And actually despite many mocking this meeting, including the New York Post who called her Kim Thong Un, adding Trump meets rump at the other big ass summit, Alice Marie Johnson's story is actually interesting and it really hits on mandatory minimums. And so there's that and much more in the links down below, but unfortunately I have to get out of here because uh, this is the last show in this office and I gotta move. Now remember, if you like this video, you like what I try and do, 
new on this channel, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, maybe ring that bell. Also, if you missed yesterday's Philip DeFranco show, you wanna catch up, especially with the, the last story, which was just crazy. All you've gotta do is click or tap right there to watch that. Unless you want something a little bit lighter, you can watch the newest behind the scenes vlog by clicking that. But that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow, either in a video or in a live stream where we tour the new, uh, the new facility.